Waldrop Shaw, author of Design Your Life, and it's you and me for free for the next 30 minutes. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we are going to do five things. We're going to focus on, first, goal-setting mistakes, mistakes people make when they set goals. Number two, goal categories. Number three, goal-setting by design, how to do it. Number four, habits. And number five, accountability. We're gonna take your want to into your have to. Are you ready? Do you wanna turn your I want to into I have to? Because that's the difference between people who achieve and people who dream. And so let's get started. Again, I'm Pamela Waldrop Shaw. I'm author of 90 Day Planner. If you think this is going to be beneficial to your friends and you've already shared this message with them before, go ahead and share it with them again. Just swipe up on your phone or click the share arrow and send it to your Facebook and then that way you can review the video when we're done. And go back and see the beginning if you missed it. You can visit me at PamelaShaw.com and you can get your design planner there. And you can also follow me um, on PamelaShaw.pink for my blog and other tips. And eventually we're gonna move all the Design Your Life videos over there. So please get familiar. I'm at PamelaShaw on Instagram. And weekly I put ideas and thoughts and tips that will benefit you in the design of your life. So hopefully you'll grab that. And then on Twitter and Snapchat, I'm Pamela. W Shaw. So here we go. How are you doing so far creating your vision list, your bucket list, your what I want to do before I die list? How are you doing thinking and dreaming bigger? Have you been putting some time and energy into that? I hope so. I'd love to see your, your replies on the chat. Also, how are you doing with your daily? How did you do this last week with your yellow sticky pad? Did you consider setting an alarm for windows of time? You know, it's really important that throughout the course of your day, while you're creating new habits and working with your time, nothing happens on your date book in terms of a list. You can make lists from now or until the cows come home, as we say in Kentucky, and nothing's gonna happen. Something on your list has to have an appointment on your calendar, and that's why the yellow sticky pad is invaluable, because you can have a list, but if you take, go to the yellow sticky pad and then put it on a specific time frame, then it's much more likely to get done. So I urge you to play around with that. When I first started really time blocking myself and investing myself in, in making sure that I got things done during the day, I would also set my alarm. Before we had smartphone alarms, I would set my alarm and I'd give myself 10 minutes for one activity or 30 minutes for another activity. So work together with what works today. And of course, it's never been easier with your smartphone. So, this year, things you want to accomplish. In that section where it says, what I want to accomplish in my lifetime and what do I want to accomplish this year? Well, what I want to accomplish this year has to join the form of a goal. Otherwise, it's still on your wish list. And so, what you want to accomplish this year has to have a goal attached to it. So. If you're watching this, you're somebody who wants to learn how to set goals. You didn't just get on here because I said, hey, I'll be talking at four o'clock. <laughs> you got on here because I said, I'm gonna be talking about how to set goals and how to create habits to support those goals. So if you're on here today, you care about that. Is that right? You wanna learn how to be a better goal setter, how to implement the accomplishment of more goals. So let me ask you this. What was the last goal that you set and accomplished? What was the last goal you set and accomplished? Part two, when was it? When was the last time you set and accomplished a goal? Okay, so when I talk about goals, when I just say the word goals, you setting goals, you accomplishing goals, how does that make you feel? I want you to notice the physiology surrounding yourself right now. How do you feel right now talking about goals? Do you feel excited? Do you feel uh, embarrassed? Do you feel disappointed? Do you feel hope-filled? How do you feel right now? Just the template of it. Even asking the question, when was the last goal you set and accomplished and how long ago was that? Be aware about your thoughts that surround the concept of goal setting because we're going to talk about some of the mistakes people make when setting goals. I 
think I've probably made every mistake there can be in goal setting. I, I'm sure that I have. And so I want to throw some of them out with you. And we're just going to acknowledge some of the mistakes and then we're going to move on about how we can get past some of those mistakes. Does that sound like a good plan? Okay, mistake number one, thinking there's a better time, a better day, a better month, a better year to set a goal. It's I'm going to do this later when I feel like it. I'm going to do this after the kids get back in school. I'm going to I'm going to set this goal um when I after I lose 10 pounds. I'm going to set this goal after Thanksgiving. I'm going to do it in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm just going to wait until January 1st. We we operate so much on our emotions and on how we feel. And we think we're going to set we're going to wait just wait one minute. <laughs> I'm just going to wait a minute until I feel better. That is the biggest mistake you can make. Waiting. Waiting. Procrastination. Procrastinators, they justify, they defend, they hide, they lie, they get mad at you because they think, they, they project their thoughts onto you and they get mad at you because they think you're not on believing in them or on their team or they get mad at you. You know what? If you're mad some, at somebody else right now because you haven't accomplished a goal, shame on you not anybody else's fault. It's not anybody else's responsibility. The biggest mistake each of us makes, regardless of what our goal is, is procrastination, thinking that we can justify or defend. You know what, Yang, I want to tell you something. There is never a right time. There is never a right time, a best time. There's never an easy time. Um, there's a, 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 a social media post that I found this last week, and I just want to read it to you. I'm not going to recommend the book because I haven't read the book, and I don't like to recommend books that I haven't read. But this book, this sn snippet just reminded me of, of just a truth. And it says this, there is no perfect moment, no time when you will know enough to guarantee that you're going to get what you want. No time that you're going to be 100% sure that you're ready to have a child. When you'll be 100% sure that you're ready to fall in love. There's, there's never a good time to take a job, move cross country, build a business, show your work, stand in your truth, pursue your dream. Still at some point imperfectly informed with butterflies in your belly, you'll still need to act to your own unknown. You'll still need to act on your own unknown. You know, most people just never buckle down to do the more disciplined choice because, because it takes courage. So the biggest mistake is waiting. And then the next big mistake, let's see, number two, is um, unwilling to give anything up to have something more. That's mistake number two, unwilling to give anything up. I want what I want right now. I want my schedule right now, my freedom right now. I want everything that I'm already committed to right now, but I want more. People mistake, mistakenly think that they can set a big goal, but not give anything up. I want to inject this right now. I do feel like over the years I have made the appropriate sacrifices. I have given up many things. In my 20s, I gave up dating. <laughs> I gave up sleep. Those are the two things that I gave up in my 20s. Um, there are, in my 30s, I gave up sport, watching sports. I love sports. Oh my gosh, I love professional football and basketball. My late husband and I used to watch all of it. But in my 30s, as a, as a young mom building my business, that's what I gave up. Um, and so you, you have to give something up along the way. Let me quickly say, I never compromise my values. It's not a matter of compromise. It's a matter of making the appropriate sacrifice. Number three, people take on a working towards accomplishing too many goals at one time. I'm going to wake up in the morning at 5 a.m. and then I'm going to have my quiet time and I'm going to read the whole Bible between now and Christmas. And then I'm going to memorize 40 um, scriptures and then I'm going to eat clean 365 straight consecutive days and I'm going to be a size two by in the morning. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. But the reality is we take on too many goals at one time. And the, uh, the fourth one is a uh, mistake is that we set our goals based on popular vote. What do you think I should do? What do you think I should do? You don't think I can do it? You think that you think I'm sacrificing something? You think I'm not? We let other people tell us why <laughs> we could or shouldn't do our, um, do our goal. So you've got to ask yourself, what will I need to stop? What will I need to start? What will I need to continue? And what will I need to enhance if you're going to goal set? I want you to take a quick look now at your design book and find the categories for your goals. They are at the, near the beginning 
of your design book and it just simply says goal areas the different areas that you can set your goal so if you have your planner open it up to that page it's about one two three four pages in it's near the very beginning four pages in so once we're there we're going to ask a couple of things we're going to take a look at the different categories that there are like I just said, one of the big mistakes is setting a goal for all of those different areas. And if you're asking me now where you get the planner, it's PamelaShaw.com. Click on Design Tools. We'll get it mailed out UPS the next day. Um, the goal areas for you to set, you just have to think about your life comprehensively. You are a total being. You're not just a family person. You're not just a social person. You're not just an academic person. You may have all of these roles in your life, but you're not one of that. You're a, you're a combination of all. And so there are many different places you could goal set, and these are the primary ones. Spiritual, family, career, physical, personal, social, educational, and financial what one area is the most important to you right now it's not saying the others aren't important sometimes people choose goals because they think that's what other people think they should do bad idea so what one area is the most important to you right now I'm going to suggest for the purpose of our journey together that you select no more than two areas if you select more than three you start stacking failure against yourself because it's too much change and you and, and we're not wired for that much change at one time so I'm gonna say pick one for sure that you're really willing to goal set in and maybe two and select those areas now you already know what it is you already know what it is you, God's already been whispering to you hey when you hey you need to you already know what it is so stop acting like you don't know because you do know you do know which area is your number one and you do know which area is your number two and as you look through the book the next thing that you're going to do is ask yourself which two three at the most I'm gonna say two so that means you're only gonna be filling in basically two sections here because the first thing we're looking at on the next page is long-term goals we're gonna break them down as you flip the page we're gonna go long-term goals short-term goals and then how will you know that you're on target by the end of the month, the next page, and then the end of the week? So let's say your top goal is going to be spiritual, okay? What, what do you want to need to, to do to grow spiritually? For me, this was foundational for many, many years. There were years when I would wake up and you know hit that five o'clock club and go straight into my quiet time and Bible reading and prayer and journaling and deep thinking um, just to get to know God and to really come to the place that I am today with knowing that his promises are true and knowing that regardless of the circumstances, who he says he is, I believe him. But it took that kind of investment to really build that relationship like it would any other relationship. So let's say if your long-term goal has something to do with growing spiritually, when you flip it, what's your short-term goal? Let's say long-term is about a year from now. Let's say short-term is about three months from now. And then how will you know by the end of the month that you're on target? And how will you know by the end of the week? So basically you have some homework to do and it's really going to have to do with deciding first of all what these categories are and what the goal is and you're like oh my gosh man there there could be so many goals within one category that's right but in order for you to be successful you're going to pick one one thing within the goal not well I'm just gonna do more that's just not even a goal you're kidding yourself more it won't work you've got to be very specific which I'll explain to you in a minute but here we are on the concept of your next goal. Ask yourself with the category. Let's say, let's take physical. That's an easy one to do. Let's, let's take the goal of physical health, wellness, fitness. That's, I, that's all for me umbrellaed under the title of physical. What's the one thing that would make the biggest difference in the accomplishment of your goal? What's the one thing that would make the biggest difference? And that is what the goal becomes. So, Let's say, for example, eating clean would be the one thing that would give me my next catapult in fitness because I already work out five days a week. Three, th four to six for sure, usually, usually five, sometimes six. So if I'm already doing that and I'm already confident in my workout, I'm confident in my trainer, I'm confident in what I'm doing, I'm confident in my form, uh, if I'm confident in all that, what's the next thing I could do to take my fitness to a new level? Well, I could eat clean, 
six and a half days a week. So I, I would already know that. So what is it for you? What is the goal that you're gonna give the most energy to that would give you the biggest bang for your buck? Maybe it's your career. Let me tell you something, if it's your career, it's gonna have something to do with growth. It's gonna have something to do with growth and growing people and growing a, the movement of product and growing your team. So if it's growth, what's the one thing that you could do or do more of to make the biggest difference? You already know the answer. And that's gonna be where you're gonna, that's the question you're gonna ask yourself in every goal category. What's the one thing that would make the biggest difference? Before we go into uh, an area of goal setting, if you feel like your friends would benefit from breaking, me breaking down for you how, do you how you set successful goals and you haven't shared yet, go ahead and share your screen if you would. And then that way, the recording will be on your wall and your friends can see what you're talking about and you can share this together because I'm going to break down for you um, how to really look at goals. Most everybody who teaches anything about goal setting talks about SMART goals. S-M-A-R-T. Every good goal is S-M-A-R-T. It's an acronym for um, words that will help you to really cross-check your goal to see if it's a goal that is well set. You can say, I'm going to blah, 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 blah. But if it's a goal that's not well set, you're not going to accomplish anything. So S-M-A-R-T means your goal is smart. It's set up for success. S typically stands for specific. M stands for measurable. A stands for achievable. R stands for relevant. And T stands for time sensitive. S smart. S, S specific. M measurable. A achievable. R relevant. And T time sensitive. Now, these can have other names to, uh, 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 to go along with them. S specific could stand for also a stretching goal. A goal that's gonna stretch you, it's gonna take you out of your comfort zone, it's gonna take you into a place that you've never been before. So ask yourself some questions about the specificity, easy for me to say, specificity or the stretching of the goal. What's one thing you'll implement to accomplish this goal? What would make this goal fun? Who specifically will be impacted by the success of this goal and by your decision? What specific action steps or strategy are you going to take to stretch yourself to accomplish this goal? Those questions answered in the S part of the acronym will benefit you along the way. M, measurable. It could also stand for meaningful. You're not going to set a goal that's just meaningless to you. Obviously, it's going to mean something. So let's measure your meaningful goal. What do I mean by that? Well, how will you track and measure your weekly progress and results? How will you know that it's time to celebrate? What makes the goal meaningful to you in the first place? How could you involve your family in accomplishing this goal so that they're on board for the temporary sacrifice that you may be making? What systems would you want or need to have to accomplish your goal? M, measurable. A, achievable or taking action. Um, there are a lot of other words you could apply to it, but let's just roll with action and achievable. How will you get this done? What is going to inspire you to go the distance? How is your commitment, how strong is your commitment? How deep are your choices? And what steps will you take to achieve and take this action? R, realistic. R could also stand for rewarding. What is going to be rewarding about your goal? Or what's currently, why is this relevant in your life right now? So, realistic, you know, what's in it for me? What are you going to do uh, to let other people know that this is important to you? How does this align with your values and where does it fit into the plan? R, realistic, relevant, rewarding. T, time sensitive. This is the biggest thing that people don't do. Well, in 2020, <laughs> that's a long time away, sister. <laughs> I mean, really, uh, time sensitive. Goals need a start time and a stop time. You know, I'm gonna tomorrow and then I'll know eventually. And then, you know, blah, 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 uh, you know, uh, in 2017, well, that's pretty vague still. It can say in 2017, but I would like to hear you say January 30th, 2017. 
time sensitive. How are you going to get started? When will you get started? Um, who can support you to complete this on time? And what are your start and end dates? T, time sensitive. They have to be tangible. You have to know what they are. So long term, short term, month end, benchmark, and end of week. The reality is very simple, that when you have all of those things in place for your goal, S-M-A-R-T, and you apply that process and those questions to your goal, um, then you're going to be set up for success. So I encourage you, you see where it says long-term goal? There's only space for three in your 90-day planner. I, you don't need more space. If you'll just invest yourself in three, two to three goals, they can all be in the same category. They can be in a different category. Um, they can be in three different categories. You can have three goals in two categories. But long term, I would say for us in the United States, no more than a year. And if we lived in Japan, we might be talking about a, a you know, a 50-year plan or a 500-year plan. But we live here with microwave really mentality so I would say a year is a long uh, a long stretch of time to go the distance for a goal um, some of you are operating on June 30th as your frame re of reference and so sure absolutely let that be your long-term goal so that, because we know what that benchmark is um, for, for those of you looking at June 30th so long term short term I would go by quarters uh, three months at a time 90 days at a time because that's a design book and if you can go by by the end of this design book by the end of this 90-day planner here's where I'm gonna be but when I fill in my last day on this 90-day planner here's where I'm gonna be you can get excited about that because you know what the pages are and you you can start it start to feel when they start thinning out and you know that you got to amp it up so then here's the beauty of this when you get to the end of a week remember we talked about this last week so I'm on Sunday today, and uh, my Sunday, I overplanned. I did. I overplanned. I did it again. That's okay because I have left some space throughout the week to fill some of these things in. But when I get to um, filling out my uh, other pieces of, uh, well, I did, I, actually, I do mine on Saturday, of, you know, reflect on the week. What went well? What, what can I improve? Review goals. Review your goals. And I did last night. I went back and I looked. Long-term, short-term benchmark. Read them again. Brother, sister, when you go back and you read this at the end of every week, oh, you're going to be so tuned in to what you say you want. You won't live in the delusion and the illusion of days passing and weeks passing and months passing and you not advancing and you feeling like life is getting away from you. When you focus on 90 days at a time, one day at a time, one half hour at a time on your yellow sticky pad and you max out the day the very best that you can and you give the day the best that you've got, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. At the end of the week, just follow the book. Just do what it tells you. What did you do well? Write it down. What can you improve on? Write it down. Go back and look at your goals. Oh, that's a novel idea. <laughs> Go back and look at your goals and reread them and adjust them. Because here's what's going to happen. As you go back and you reread your goals, one of two things will happen. One, I really want this. This week, I'm going to amp it up and I'm going to live in alignment with what I say that I want. Two, you know what? I'm not doing anything towards this goal. This goal, I don't even, it doesn't even make my heart pitter patter. I don't even, I wrote this down because I thought so and so wanted me to do this goal. I don't know what I want. I need to rethink. I need to go back into vision. I need to go back into uh, really prayerfully deciding, you know, what my next step is. God, lighten my heart to something. Stop working on a goal that you don't want. But don't kid yourself that it's not what you want just because you don't feel like doing it. There's a very fine line in between. I don't want this anymore and I don't feel like doing it. So therefore, I think I don't want it. I'm out. I'm out for now because I don't feel like it. That's not going to fly even for you. Not because I say so and not because I'm judging. I will never know most likely. But because you know, you've got to be honest with yourself. It's the key to success in anything. Self-honesty, being honest with yourself will be the key that will catapult you forward. Okay, so benchmark, end of week. And then like I said in the very beginning, as you line up your new week, you have got to put your list on your appointment yellow sticky pad. Things on your list have to have an appointment with you. They have to have an amount of time. You can set your alarm clock and hear what that time is, but the reality is you can work this tighter and your design book is going to take you there. Are you excited? <laughs> I'm excited 
for you. So, um, again, a list is just a list without an appointment. You gotta have an actual time slot for your list. Okay, let's talk quickly about habits. Um, my other little iPhone died up here before I got here and I didn't know it, so I've set my iPhone for the, uh, for the 30 minute mark. So if something funky happens when my timer goes off and it cuts me off, <laughs> you'll know that it was my oops. Um, let me go ahead and tell you now, in case that does happen, what we're going to do. I'm gonna take a break from giving you a regular, like, uh, next Sunday meet me. I'm gonna take a, at least a week off, and I'm gonna ask you to write in the comment section any questions that you have this week, any experiences that you would like for me to expound on, anything that you didn't really get from today. I want you to take the comment section and just fill it up with your questions, pass this to your friends, and then when I get uh, those comments back, I will review them and then I will create and put out there when the next live date is going to be, you and me for free. How does that sound? The next one I'm gonna focus on thoughts and how your brain works and how to create affirmations to retrain your brain how to think about you and how to think about others. You know, wouldn't it be great if we could retrain our brain to really think about others? Well, I'm not gonna get into that now because we can. Okay, so let's talk about habits for a minute. There are some habits that Olympic champions have that we don't have. You want to know what they are? <laughs> there are a couple things that they have ingrained inside of them that we do not have, and that is an appreciation for the mundane. Olympic athletes are fabulous at the mundane. They recognize that day after day after day, perfect practice, perfect coaching, perfect performance, perfect showing up with an idea, with a model of what that is. And, and I would say most of them have ever, you know, only occasionally hit that mark and it's all they do. You know, that's all they do. Their job is working out, their job is swimming or gymnastics or whatever it is. But they have an appreciation for the mundane, that the repetition of the mundane over and over, when they'd rather be maybe partying with their friends at their age or sleeping in at their age or eating junk food at their age or, you know, whatever it is that they would rather be doing that their peers get to do that they don't get to do because of the goal that they've set. How do you do with mundane? How do you do when nobody else is around and there are no bells and whistles, there is no party, there is no music, there is no applause, there is no beautiful evening gown, there is no audience, it's you and your goal. How do you do with the mundane day after day after day after day after day with a day for rest? How do you do with that? because Olympic athletes do well with it. The other thing that they do is that they understand the value of preparation. I've said this for years, when opportunity presents itself, it's too late to get prepared. And so it's important for you to get prepared. I think I shared with you at the very beginning that I've been working with the Design Your Life process for 20 years. It's been a published book for 16 years. This did not just happen last month because I thought it was a good idea when Facebook Live came on. I just feel really a, a joy and a privilege to be able to have a, a source of communication with those of you who've already been students of the Design Planner for years and years and years so that I can give you kind of an updated version of the education and how to use it. It's my joy to be able to do that. You and me for free. <laughs> there is a CD that explains it, but you know, I'm 16 years past that CD too. I recorded it years ago and so I'm grateful to be able to do that. But again, this has been a long process. So how do you do with the preparation factor behind the scenes when nobody's watching? Today, my Instagram post was just that. It was about private victories precede public victories and it's behind the scenes when nobody's watching. So you've gotta ask yourself every single day, it was another post of mine this week, what do I want now? Well, you know what, right now on Sunday, I wanna bake chocolate chip cookie dough and I wanna have on my sweatpants and I'd like to be on the couch watching football and I might like to flip through some magazines and read a book, maybe do a little mail order, a little Neiman Marcus. That's what I want now. What do I want most? What I want most is to fulfill my calling in life, which includes mentoring and coaching leaders who multiply leaders, people who wanna get this piece and live their best life. Um, I want to be a, a healthy person and treat my body as his temple that it is. Um, I want to eat and choose healthy food so that my thinking can be clear and I'll get a good night's sleep and wake up tomorrow and feel like I have integrity with myself. Um, I want to be financially savvy and so therefore online shopping could be like someone else's binge something else and so therefore it's probably not a good idea. If I walk in my closet, maybe just take the Neiman Marcus catalog or the website, I could probably put together every outfit that I like because I have similar things. What do I want now? Um, I want to make cookie dough and I want to sit on the couch and watch football. 
What do I want most? I want a fit, healthy body, and I want to have integrity with myself. So I'm doing a Facebook Live, you and me for free, <laughs> instead of making cookie dough and sitting on the couch. <laughs> it, it's not, it's that simple. It's not easy, but it is that simple. So you're gonna need to get in the process of ask, asking yourself, am I okay with the Monday? Do I understand that this is preparation? What do I want now? What do I want most? And when you do that over and over and over again, and you give yourself the honest answer and the best answer and you choose best, it's gonna accumulate. So. Let's talk about habits. You don't break a habit, you replace a habit. I can't break the habit of sleeping in late until I create the habit of waking up early. So you've gotta create new ones. There are lots of habits we can talk about. We can talk about fitness, we can talk about sleep, we can talk about words that we spew on other people, we can talk about growing a business, we can talk about, we can talk about anything because it really doesn't matter. We all have habits, good ones and bad ones, habits that serve us well, habits that don't do so well for us. So with your habits, there are, uh, the page in here says, breaking the habit of blank by creating the habit of blank. And there are, there are, uh, there's only room for three of these. Again, you don't want to take on too many. Breaking the habit of blank. What do I want to break the habit of? I want to break the habit of grabbing a certain snack. I want to break the habit of hitting snooze. I want to break the habit of sleeping in too late. I want to break the habit of um, procrastination. I want to break the habit of saying what I think. I want to break the habit of spewing myself all over Facebook before there's really any information about anything. I want to break the habit. We all have them. So what three habits would most support your the success of your goals? Okay, you don't break a habit, you crowd it out by creating a new one. So, first, you pick your habits, and then your habits pick you. So, what habits do you want to break? There's the reality is simply this you have to decide what habit is not serving you well and what habit could crowd it out or replace it. The example that I give a lot is I want to break the habit of sleeping in late. Okay, so I have to create the habit of waking up early. Easy, I set an alarm. Mm, okay. Set an alarm tomorrow and set it for half hour, an hour earlier and see what happens. You'll hit snooze and you won't get up. Maybe you need to set a second alarm. Have you seen those little alarms that like they crawl around on the floor and you have to get up and turn them off? Maybe that's your second alarm. But maybe the um, habit of putting your workout clothes on right beside you, that's what I would do. I would wake up and before I would do anything else, I would put on my workout clothes, take my jammies off, put on my workout clothes, buckle up my sneakers because really that's the... That's the decision in between when you do and don't work out, having to decide what to wear. Sometimes it's between waking up and going to the bathroom that you say, I'm, I'm, I'll work out tomorrow. But if you already have your workout clothes on, you are one step closer to out the door and for that workout. So what habits need support for you to go the next distance? There's gonna be no real or significant change that will happen in your life until you change something that you do every day. And uh, that is going to show up in the form of habits. Blaming someone else, it's out. Excuse making, it's out. Blaming is out, excuse making is out. The phrase of the day is personal responsibility. It's on me. I do need support. I do need someone cheering me on. I do need my family to align with this goal. But personal responsibility, it is up to me. So look at both your goals and your habits as wins that you are in charge of, that you can make happen. Daily, in your design book, somewhere in there, right? What is my win for today gonna be? What does a win look like for me today? When you wake up and you know how winning is gonna feel and how you're gonna check off that win at the end of the night, it won't be long before you feel like a winner and before you start acting and living like the winner that you are. So decide the night before you go to bed in your design book when you have it all set up for tomorrow, what is a win gonna look like? What habit am I going to replace by creating a new habit? Remember the accumulation factor that I told you about last time is one of the principles of design your life is that time accumulates, success accumulates. It's the accumulation of daily small choices. The choices that I'm making today, they accumulate with the choices that I made yesterday and tomorrow. And so therefore, it's the accumulation of those choices that produces success. But failure is the same. It works the same way. The absence of making those choices over time also produces failure. 
So you've gotten the, the principle of accumulation. You have the principle, the 90 day principle. Uh, in 90 days, you can change anything. You can change your body. You can change your relationship. You can change your business in 90 days. And then I also gave you the time principle. Time invested in one area, well, it's time away from another. So you gotta be very careful, very intentional with your yes and your no. Well, here's another principle I'm gonna leave you with today, and that is that you can't change what you won't acknowledge. You can't change what you won't acknowledge. If you're blaming someone and you won't acknowledge it, you can't change it. If you can't, if you won't acknowledge what it is that God's been whispering at you about with your goal and your habit, if you won't acknowledge it, if you won't be honest about it, you can't change it. You can't change what you won't acknowledge. Accountability, a word on accountability before we part. People who achieve success in life, people who create new habits, people who set goals and win at them have accountability with another person. People who are private, who hide, who don't make themselves available for coaching, who don't wanna have the tough conversation because they don't wanna answer the hard questions because it might make them feel badly, they will not achieve their goals. You've got to be someone who is transparent and have someone in your life that you can trust and be accountable with. My closing thoughts are simply this. As you're thinking about your goals, as you're thinking about setting your goals, ask yourself this question. What would need to happen between now and December 31st that would let me say, this has been my best year ever? What would need to happen between now and December 31st for you to say, this was a winning year? Where have you bailed on your goals in the past? What hasn't happened in the past? When you've set a goal and the result wasn't there, where have you failed in the past? What hasn't happened? Where have you bailed? How will you persevere? How will you learn from that? And how will you persevere and move forward this time? Lastly, how are you going to keep your two or three goals and two or three habits in front of you? How will you wake up and remember them? How will you go throughout your day and acknowledge that this is what you're about right now? This is what you're working on. So I'd love for you to write your questions in the comment section. I hope you'll share our live broadcast today, you and me for free. Session two on goal setting and habits with your friends. Share it on Facebook, share it from your phone. Um, if you need a planner and would like to start a 90 day plan, planner of your own, you can visit us at PamelaShaw.com. Click on design tools and it will happen. So, um, our next session, I'm going to give it a couple of, I'm going to give it a little bit of time. I will let you know when it is, but the next one will be a com combination of me answering your questions from this chat and then also focusing on your thoughts, your brain, and your affirmations. So do something today that your future self will thank you for. Join me the next time. I can't wait to see you again, but until then, design your life live your vision every day. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.